Of all the dozens and dozens of mini PCs I have tested on the channel, this one here seems to be the craziest one out there. It's got the potential to be absolutely ridiculous. In fact, I think they are the most envelope pushing, boundary pushing, interesting idea mini PC that I have ever seen. Would I go as far to say that this is the best mini PC I have ever reviewed? I think it's close. But also this is not just one mini PC. This kind of three mini pieces in one. You buy one and you get three. And I know how this comes across. You might have more questions than entering this video. I attempt to answer all of them because I'm super excited. Why? Because for the first time, we don't have gaming mini PC. What does this say over here? Made for creating. Take a look at this. Yeah, baby, let's go. Ah, it's so annoying. I don't want to pay hundreds of dollars to just change my Windows wallpaper just because my Windows isn't licensed. Well, why don't you try Hookies? That's a ton cheaper. And if you use the code TN20, you get it even cheaper. What do you mean? How do I get it and how is it possible? Well, see this video here or the one you're watching. Click yeah. in the link on the video description, add the Windows 11 CD product to the cart, proceed to checkout, add the code TN20 for the extra discount. So what the Windows 11 Pro OEM key is just $23.22. Yeah. Choose the preferred payment option and complete the purchase. The key will be available on the purchased orders in a few moments. Copy the key and paste it into your Windows activation settings and you're all done. Oh, well, that was easy. Is that Ryan Gosling? Uh, um, uh, no. Anyway, by the way, the same discount code also works website-wide, so go check out uh, other products. Maybe like Microsoft Office. It's pretty cool to see a full tower, mini ITX, and then an actual mini PC side by side. Here we go. We'll just press this power button. It turns off, goes blue. And there we go. This is your mini PC. So you might be saying, what are you talking about? How is this a PC? This is the guy that houses all of the mini PC. He's not the guy. I am. So on the top, we have this power button with a little LED indicator. We've got fan grills on the right side and then on the left side. If we're looking underneath, We've got some very special pins in there. And then finally, we've got a little door here. And if we press down in there, it comes off and you can add storage. Have you seen that on Apple? No, don't think so. Just pop it in there, get extra two terabytes of storage if you want a secondary SSD. Oh. In the back of this, we've got Thunderbolt 4 port, this on the left side, then USB 4 port, HDMI port, and then two USB type A ports. And if you wanted to, you can actually just use this mini PC just like that. Look, we're going to put the HDMI in here. It does come with a USB-C charger. This here is 65 watts. Pop it into any of these ports in the back. And if we just turn this PC on, voila, what's got going on there? Boom. We pop our other keyboard in the back there as well. Now, if we're looking at the specs of this tiny mini PC there, it's actually quite impressive for that tiny pocket size, slightly larger than smartphone size. We have got an Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. Now, if you go through the links in the description below, I've actually found an interesting thing. There is something called Carter's Mind 2S, and I think the S is for next generation or something like that, because this is Carter's Mind 2. And the 2S has the next generation Core Ultra 7 255H for the same price, which is a little bit confusing for me and offers you up to 20% more performance, sometimes even more. If you're purchasing yours, go with the newer one if it's the same price. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now this is soldered onto the device, so that's a little bit of a bad thing. You can get 64 gigabytes of it if you wanted to, which is pretty ridiculous. 32 gigabytes, plenty for most people, and it's running 6400 megatransfers per second. If you go with the 2S, then you can get it at 8400 megatransfers per second. That's very fast and up to 64 gigabytes, which is pretty ridiculous spec. Mine comes with a one terabyte SSD inside, 
the PC. Plus, I have an upgrade here. Just pop in another two terabyte of the M.2, the 2230 version. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to leave some links in the description below. For example, the Western Digital SN770 M, something like that. No problem at all. We've got the Intel NPU and then Intel GPU built into that. What the heck is this guy here then? What is mind graphics? Well, what we have over here is graphics card, dock, power supply. This is card as mind graphics. As you already can see, you can plug in that thing on the top there. And if you don't know how this actually works, go check out my video that we made in IFA. Um, last year in September, I'll leave the link in the description below, but in there we actually showed you exactly how this works. If you want to see this actually transferred, we did that in there. But that's when I saw this for the first time, but now I can actually have hands-on, test it, I've been testing it, and it, it's very impressive. So these are some very special connectors, PCI connectors that gives you power, and then all the connectivity uh, PCI from this graphics card to the actual you know mini PC that's in there. What you have here is an SD card slot, full size, fast impressive you've got USB-C or Thunderbolt and this is Thunderbolt 4 port and very interestingly if you want to use this guy with any of the other laptops you might have another laptop or something else that supports Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 bear in mind plug it in there and you can use this graphics here as an eGPU for any of your laptops. That is very amazing. You have headphone and mic combo jack just over there. Little indicator light over there that reminds me of a little bit of the Be Quiet new cooler. We've got some fans and speaker grill on the bottom as well. Oh, did I mention the speakers built in as well? They're pretty good. On the side, on left side here, what we have is a finger pen and power button. These two tiny little dots in there are actually microphones and then we have volume up and down if you need to ever use that. On the back of the device, obviously the grill where all the cooling is going to blow out, we have a mind unlock or lock kind of a button. So if you want to lock it or unlock it with the actual PC when you're pulling it out, you got to use that button in there. We've got some display ports. We've got two HDMI, one display port, three USB type A ports, 2.5 gigabit LAN and a power cord, Mickey Mouse style. And the power supply is inside there. On the left side, there is nothing in there. You might be saying, why is it so big? Oh, because it's got an RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabytes inside. Did I mention that? In order to actually just get it going, it's super simple. Turn the PC off. Let's say you're at home or work. You just turn the PC off. Boom, the PC is off. Pull the power cord off. As you can see, these lights, are, if the light is already kind of fading, it's always on. You plug it in, it's just on. All you have to do now is plug in the HDMI cable in the back here, all right, and you already have all of your USB receivers for your keyboard and mouse in here. If you want, you can have different ones at home. You just take this guy, magnetically, it pops on, give a little push, just making sure that the pins are there, and then now we just press the power button and then watch the PC comes back on again. Not just coming back on, we have extra power. We've got GPU power now. When we go to Task Manager now, look at that, we've got two GPUs. We've got 4060 Ti, 16 gigs of VRAM, and an Intel Arc as well. So we've got the built-in Intel graphics that is really good for video editing. So if you're doing H.265, 10-bit, 422, super smooth playback, which is amazing. It gets power, it gets shoes, it gets the graphics, everything in there. And if you want to see the graphics actually in use, you might be thinking, uh, well, it's a laptop 4060 Ti, so probably not as good of a performance. It's a desktop 4060 Ti, 16 gigabytes. No, no, not laptop, what we usually get with the AMD eGPUs. Desktop 4060 graphics. So let me show you this. We've got our Intel there, and then look at that, RTX 4060 Ti. I'm gonna run Fermac so you could actually see. And if you're looking at that, we're pulling 165 watts. Boom. I wonder if we can use MSI Afterburner. Oh my goodness. I feel cheeky right now. So it's pulling 165 watts, like desktop, you know, size. Let's install this. But this is very, very impressive. You might be thinking, do we really need that 16 gigabytes of VRAM? I mean, if you're a gamer, obviously you've got to be excited for this because potentially what this can do for you. But as a creator, you might be even more excited. If you're thinking about Blender, Redshift, I mean, all these 3D applications that are out there, look at this one. We're gonna do, this is Redshift benchmark here. And if you're looking at this, let's have a look. GPU memory allocated, look at that, 11, 
15 gigabytes, it's all gone. All the VRAM is just in use. I can show you this on desktop as well. We go here, NVIDIA GPU memory. Look at that, dedicated GPU memory, 14.4 gig. It's just gone, which is really, really good. So if you have some large scenes that you need to kind of unload to the VRAM, this is amazing, especially if you're a 3D artist or creator that you just want to create some crazy things. This is amazing to have such a small form factor. The ecosystem, it just works really, really well. I mean, look at this. Look how much better we are than the Radeon W6800 GPU. We're getting more than double RTX 2070 Super performance here more than double it's it's crazy now the gpu temperatures whenever i've been testing it is actually really really good the gpu is not throttling here the performance is very nice what i haven't tested yet is the actual cpu performance so that is what i do want to do because for me i'm thinking this is such a small chassis how good is it really i mean can we really push that much power through let's see this is cinebench now and we're pushing the cpu test we have pl1 limit 64 watts and then pl2 goes to 35 but some of these are 65 as well oh look at that we are pushing 65 watts roughly around there 66 watts i think it's gonna go throttling now probably at some point we will be thermal throttling because that 60 watts that's quite insane okay and now we're down to 30 three watts i mean we could probably adjust that with the intel xtu to get a little bit more performance we have gone to 98 degrees but it's not like anything different that you would get on a laptop by the way if you didn't know this 155h is a 16 core 22 thread cpu so you've got six p cores that have two threads per call. And then you've got 10 E cores that are more efficient that can do background tasks and everything. So this hybrid architecture is actually really good, especially if you're doing video editing and you wanna render and work on a video at the same time. At about 35 watts, when we're pulling from the CPU, the temperatures are really good. Like we're averaging around 75 degrees around the cores. While it's rendering this on that CPU, there is a third thing that I need to tell you, which is it's got a dock that you can purchase separately. It's $179 roughly around that ballpark. And what that allows you to do is have this mini PC as a third workstation somewhere. So let's say you've got this big graphics card dock in here and you've got another dock station somewhere else and you just plug everything into the dock. The dock has really cool features and I've got some B-roll of this when we went to iFind there. Unfortunately, I don't have it in here. You just plug the same way you plug it into this graphics, you plug it into the dock in there and the dock allows you to have ethernet, SD card slot, some USB type A ports, my headphone and my combo jack and so on. So extra ports that you wouldn't get just with this PC. So now you have three in one mini PCs. Do you see what I mean? You've got this mini PC, and let's say on the go, you're going somewhere, you can get some monitors, you do a presentation or something like that. You just plug it in, put the HDMI in there. You can click it through and you can do a presentation if you wanted to on your computer. You don't need to plug in anything else, somewhere else, whatever. You bring your whole workflow with you. Then you come at home. You've got the dock at home. You don't need the graphics at home. You just pop it into there, boom, let's keep going. And you can do everything you need on your PC. Then you're thinking, I gotta go to work now. You just unplug that from work, pop it in your pocket, go to work, pop it into this graphics kind of dock. You get all the graphics power elements, work on video, work on anything you want, photos, you've got insane graphics power. And then when you're done, you go back home, you go back on the go. It's three in one. So instead of having three separate computers in all these different places, why don't you just take the brains of the computer with you, have one PC, because if you think of it that way, it's a lot more affordable if you don't have to purchase the main components over and over again. Your workflow is not gonna be in the cloud synced somehow. It's literally your workflow whenever you plug it in in different places. So our benchmark completed. We've got 712 points. It's kind of reasonable actual CPU performance. The single core is very high as well. The multi-core here in that tiny form factor at just 35 watts is pretty impressive. Let's talk about a little bit of the CPU thermals and fan noise. Yes, it can be a little bit loud and the CPU can go hot. But the thing is, this is a laptop CPU. If you get any of these 155H CPUs out there, it will be hot in any type of chassis. I haven't seen a chassis that hasn't really th throttled it. Intel laptops, they just want to run it hot. And if you're thinking that's just Intel, hey, have you seen my M4 Max MacBook Pro? It goes even louder and it can go 108 degrees, no problem when I'm exporting. So 
Yes, because this is a laptop type of CPU, they will throttle it a little bit, but that's type of normal performance. Now, would I like this to be any different? Yes, but it's not something that is particularly any different on this than another laptop, if that makes sense. So actually I've run some creator benchmarks here and let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve. The first run here, we got about 5,000. So you can see all these test results here. They're a little bit small, but you can see about 5,500 standard and 5,400 extended. And if we check out the secondary run, we got actually slightly more, 5,700, 5,600 extended and standard. AI score because of the NVIDIA GPU 60, that is pretty high as well. So if you want to compare that to yours, what's going on in there. Premiere Pro standard score 8,178. That's pretty impressive. Interestingly, long GOP score is slightly low in there for some reason. I'm not sure if it utilizes all of the Intel Arc media engines there or just, just play back on NVIDIA at all times. About 8,400 was the highest here, almost 8,500 and 6,000 extended score. That is pretty decent score for a mini PC like that. I would like to go as far to say this is the highest video editing score on a mini PC I have ever got. We have some really impressive AMD mini PCs out there with super high like CPU performance, but the encoding performance on any AMD integrated GPU, not very good. But because of the Intel Arc and then the Nvidia combo, that's amazing. And if you're wondering Photoshop scores here, we're getting 6,701. Again, pretty decent score in there. So in conclusion, what do I think about this then? Is it, is it worth it? Honestly, I think it's an amazing device. I think for a lot of people, this could be very, very interesting. If you're looking to have just a very interesting workflow, I love that they've got their ecosystem going and I wish they're gonna do and expand it even more and have even more things in there. There are some of the things that I think could be like improved here, which I'll talk about in a minute, but I want to talk about the positive side first. We've got fingerprint readers here. We've got speakers here. Well, talking about speakers. Hold me close till I get up. The speakers are pretty good. The usability of this just works really well. The packaging is very high quality, Apple-like thing. The design is minimalistic. I just think it feels very high quality and very well thought through. They haven't skipped on any of the quality. You really get what you pay for. It is very high quality product what I'm seeing here and I'm super happy to see that. Performance wise, amazing. I love the Intel and Nvidia combo. I think for creators, like the same here, made for creating, they're absolutely right. It's amazing. It is the best mini PC that you can get. At the same time, there are a few downsides of this. Now, number one, if you're looking at the price point of all of this here, we're looking between $1,500 to $2,000 roughly. And I mean, go check the links in the video description below. If you're looking for the best bang for buck at that price point, you're probably not going to get it with this one because you're paying a lot for the small form factor, the ecosystem, the high quality of this and just plug and play kind of feature. If you'd like to build your own, you can get it cheaper and get more performance through the links. If you'd want to build any of the PCs, go check them out down there for 1500. You can get an insane PC build that's faster than this one, but obviously it's going to be that size. And if that is an issue, there is no other way. In fact, if you want such compact form factor, it's very hard to get that type of performance. On Windows side, it, it just isn't available there. And secondly, I would love if they integrated some kind of a cooling feature for this mini PC, where if you plug it into the Mind Graphics, for example, there is some kind of a thermal connection with the Mind Graphics heatsink, so it could take the heat from the actual mini PC and then use the cooling of it as well. We just have some kind of, you know, high quality and commercial thermal pad underneath that just kind of make a connection there and takes the heat out that could improve the performance even more as well other than that i'm impressed and i'd love to know what you guys think let me know in the comment section below thanks for watching i'll see you next time god bless bye bye